Hi guys, so we have a bit of an announcement before we start. I have the big coof. Megan's got like the actual coof. The actual coof. The coofing Tested positive. Yeah. Although I'm actually somehow immune. Which I have no idea. <laughs> I don't have it. We live in the same house. We, we sleep in the, the same, same bed. bed. How in the hell does this guy because end up coming up negative? I'm just immune to the big coof, okay? The coof, big coof fears me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, look. fears me. I don't fear it. <laughs> well, look, guys. Uh, anyway, look. Let's just get into this thing. But just to let you guys know, um, I thought it was kind of interesting. But pray for me. Yeah. Thanks. See how we get on. <laughs> Hopefully, Megan doesn't die. Well, look. I don't. Well. I think we'll be fine. Y'all remember the first time you cheated? Abused player knowledge, straight up fudged rules or rules to advance a plot arc as a DM, not as the DM. But I remember when I failed both saves for a save or die spell and the DM just rolled damage instead. Another player and I just looked at him because we knew my character should be dead. Eh, you know, look, I don't know. If it meant more to the plot to keep you alive, then why not? I don't know, I don't mind. Like, you know, I think this is like... And some DMs can't be bothered waiting for you to roll up a new character, to be honest. I I think a lot of this time it comes down to game philosophy and what you guys like to play as. I I personally don't mind this that much whenever DMs fudge goals or... Yeah, I don't mind it. Like, you know, they get you out of a bit of hot bother or whatever. No, if it advances the the plot and it's just, it it works for everyone. If something was to go wrong and it completely... I'm very much against that con as Mm -hmm. much as possible. Like, if you can avoid that. I think that con's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. The, like, it's like, no, 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 that didn't happen. Let's just go back and pretend. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. Like, next post, next post. In an alien game, I accidentally rolled a pull too close to some list dice and couldn't figure out which were which. So I decided to just kill the player the attack in question was aimed at. To this day, I keep a fudge pull behind the screen so I can lift it up and be like, yeah, the dice said die and toss them an NPC sheet to get them back in the action. <laughs> well, uh, okay, okay. Like, that's, what, that, that's like the opposite way of how to handle it, you know what I mean, from the other guy, but like, to each their own, to each their own, like, you know, I never thought I'd ever come across someone who actually has, like, fake dice lined up to be, hey, hey look, look. <laughs> yeah, burns word, just saying, I've never came across that before, but maybe it's more common than you think, let us know if you know of anyone doing this, doing that. down below. I realised I misread an enemy's abilities, and it was a threat for a party ten levels higher. Fortunately enough, I forgot about two of its instant kill abilities and rolled poorly on its health. The party, who was split in two groups due to misadventures, was still nearly dead by the end, but it ran away after hitting half HP. One of my players tried to stop it, but he failed his dex check to catch up, so the party got XP for making the opponent flee. And I got to keep my super predator for later use when there was a better setup. <laughs> that's a good. That's not I, bad. Like, I think most people need to do that. Like, Improvise, adapt, yeah, overcome. Like I, I th- that's what gets me. And I, I really like the idea in like war games and stuff with like leadership goals. Yeah. Because let's be honest, not everything's gonna fight to the fucking death. No. Or, or, like you know, say if you're fighting a load of goblins and there's one goblin left, are they gonna keep that furious, exactly. furious attack up and running? That's what I really liked in. Um, is it Shadow of Mordor? Yeah. Whenever they, you're like fighting some of the orc bosses, oh, sometimes yeah, they, they just, can flee. Yeah, yeah. They in can, fear. Yeah. Uh, but I like that set in like D and D because not everything, as you said, is going to fight to the death. death. They're yeah. going to fucking run if they have the chance. And I think a lot of the time, clear death does come back to you know you guys could always just run away. Yeah. You know what I mean? You not can, everyone is going. to... You don't have to stand there and fight. Yeah. You know, I, there's more to it than yeah. just that. And I kind of wish they would put that into more tabletop games, like yeah. leadership goals and stuff yeah. like that. It just makes more sense to me personally, you know? Or maybe that's just because I was way more into like wargaming and stuff way before I got into role playing games. Yeah. I don't know. I had a fight set up where they were up against a pair of white lions. Basically fleece me and lions with damage resistance, stronger attacks, and a bunch more health to be a threat to a party of level sixes. When they had one down to about half health and the other at a quarter, I decided the fight had been going on a bit long. And the next time someone hit the half health one, that killed it. And now the other one was enraged. Still took them another two turns to kill it. Good times were had by all, and they all had a side quest after that to find someone to make armour out of the cat's flame. No, I really like this one just because I think DMs should be dynamic when it comes to encounters. 
it shouldn't be a very static thing. And look, you guys know whenever combat's going on for too long. Oh my god, it gets so tedious. And sometimes you just get like, okay, now I go, now I go, and then I go, and oh, then this happens, and this happens, and that goes. Sometimes combat can get a bit dry though. Yes. If it's going on for too long, and you're just chipping tiny amounts of hitch. HP, HP along at a time especially if they've got high armor class yeah. and it's just like miss 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 oh they hit you miss miss you know what I mean <laughs> you, you guys know you, you guys oh, have been yeah. that you're sitting them. there for like two hours and you're yeah. like oh my god you, sometimes you really should be dynamic with yeah. the situation the GM cannot cheat it's his game the rules are suggestions to the GM he can use or ignore them as he wishes the dice are there to add a random element and the GM can use them or pull numbers out of his ass. You people have never played a TT in your lives. You act like it's fucking poker or cards, or like the DM is the opponent, or like it's a fucking video game. Yeah, I, 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 I know a lot I of know people, what I get, I, I get it. A lot of people are gonna be like, oh, clearly this guy's just a shit story shitter. You know what I mean? He's yeah. just, he's just, go, he's yeah. gonna come in. He's just gonna dump buckets and buckets of monologue on you you know what I mean it's all about the story it's not about gameplay at all but I do think this guy's onto something like you know, I, I don't I think it's hard to argue that he's not onto no, something no no he definitely is because the it is the GM's game because the it, a good GM only it follows so much yeah and then they write their own yeah, I, 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 I think a lot of DMs do do that themselves. This is why you hold on to your good DM, all right? Oh, good DMs are fucking gold dust, Suck right, boys? Dick. They are fucking gold dust, and you best be sucking their dick. Honestly. You know what I mean? Um, you, you guys look after them whenever you find good ones. <laughs> Create you know? that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, d- I, d- I get a lot of people who are going to be like, oh, he's been a bit of massive story shutter. He doesn't do this, doesn't do that. The, the goals, I think, do help. Can be bent. They can be bound within a Especially reason. if you're the GM. Yeah. Not so much the player. Yeah. But because if you're a player, you do have a certain rules to go by. But Okay, a good example. Actually, you know what? I'll give you guys a good example from the last game. So my last game was we had to... It doesn't matter. It's Spelljammer. We were in space. We were hijacking another ship anyway. And what we wanted to do was we wanted to go like... Because we were getting ambushed and we didn't know who was doing the ambition. So we had destroyed the other ships and then we did like a boarding action to get onto the other ship. But we wanted to take one of them hostage to like do a bit of interrogating to know who they are, you know. So what I decided to do was when we had like, you know, the captain, um, I asked DM, um, you know, can I use my whip to like hit him in the leg and like trip them up? You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. knock them prone. Yeah. Now I know that's a fighter's battle master. Like, you know, you would get that with the battle master yeah. park. Um, you know, but it's okay to just ask and be like, you know, can I do this? Now, of course, I rolled a one. Um, <laughs> so, he so, didn't. <laughs> you know, I did, I did drop the loop, but I had to roll the decks to make sure I didn't drop it off the side of the ship. But it was nice that I had the option. Sure. And I, and I yeah. think stuff like this, as long as you ask for it, it's like, yo, is that cool? Can I do this? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm pretty open with them ideas. Yeah. You know, does it sound cool? Can I, Can this I do this? Okay? You know, I know it's not exactly in my rules, but... Can you please let me do <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, have you, have you guys ever asked something like that? I mean, like, the DM's been like... Yeah, actually, yeah. That or if you ask to do something, the DM's a dick about it. Yeah, yeah, you know. I don't know. I always find them more guidelines. Yeah. Anyway, next post, next post. Hey guys, this is just a quick bit of promo. We got our website up and running and we have a massive restock on most of the models. However, one of the cool things about the website is if there's a model that you're waiting on, you can enter your email and be put on a waiting list. And it's not just good for you so then you'll know when they're restocked. We can also see what you guys are waiting on and what we should be printing. (laughs) So either way, the models are by far the best way to support this channel and to help us do videos that YouTube would find inappropriate on the platform. (laughs) And like, let's be serious, the models are pretty based looking. So once again, just look at the titties. Look at the lizard titties. (laughs) But anyway, let's continue on with the video. Anytime I do a story with COC in it, people are like, oh, it's the wrong one, so it's Clash of Clans from now on. All right. Ran Clash of Clans, <laughs> where the PC had to face a silver cloud that burns you from the inside if it gets a chance. Only, relatively, easy ways to kill slash capture it was to perform a spell for it to consume a human, which forces it to go to sleep or strike it with electricity. PCs create an elaborate trap, which is pretty well made, and manage to strike the creature once with lightning. But the creature still gets a con save, makes it. But I rule that, since the creature took a hit from lightning, I say it takes a decent amount of damage. They manage to lure it into the trap again by using the spell and a human is bait. 
The creature again makes its calm save, but I roll that it still takes damage and exclaims that if I roll four or more on this d6, it's destroyed. I roll it on the open and roll exactly four. I swear if I rolled three or less, the creature would have consumed the human and went into the box and the scenario ended there. And the PCs had to deal with the reality that they sacrificed a real life human. He was a criminal, but hey, so were the PCs. But I still really liked how that game went down. That's good. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Oh uh, man, like that. Oh almost... shit! If you'd done it for a trap, <laughs> no. <laughs> but like you know, for me, I I think that uh, loads of people have come across this before. Like if you don't know what it is, odds are evens. Yes, for odds, no for no evens. For, yeah. You know what I mean? Just go d twenty, and it's a fifty fifty. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just see what happens. Yeah. Like you know, but I I you know what I mean? This is where I think this is a this is a little overarching spine. I think of this video is. DMs need to be flexible, yeah. and I think it's important to be flexible. Yeah, you know, and that's really how you understand. get a good DM. In my game, many of the monsters the PCs encounter are rare, and only known to experts or veteran adventures. Sometimes they can make a check to see if they know anything about an enemy. Otherwise, they might not even know its name if they didn't come prepared. So if my veteran players let slip that they know something about its stat block, I change things on the fly, telling the caster PC it has a dex of proficiency. It's got wisdom proficiency now too, measuring its 30 feet range ability and then awkwardly backpedaling outside of it. It's 45 feet now. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, see big boys that look up stat blocks though, you're just, you're looking for bother. I know. Like, you know, see if you're like, you know finally when someone's doing it, you quickly hear Furious taking on the keyboard <laughs> over this, where it's like, uh, you know, are you gonna, are you, do you want more hit points? Do you, are you really asking for this? You know, I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Have you ever came across that? I'm, I'm sure. I see sure, that. there's some like that. I, I know tons of people that have. <coughs> yeah, all the time. See if someone's like specifically going out of the way to play a meta game, and it's obvious. Yeah. During it, it's like, like, yeah. I'm throwing an extra 30, 40 hit dice on that. Fuck you. Easy. <laughs> yeah, I had created an extremely simple puzzle that could be solved by literally just doing what I said. The solution was follow simple instructions. The catch was there was some rapidly approaching certain death type danger if the puzzle wasn't solved in time. One guy was doing this puzzle because the others fucked off somewhere else and he decided to inspect the entire fucking room and everything in it rather than the book I kept mentioning. The only book. The book that said escape on it <laughs> in big letters. <laughs> he nearly died so I just decided to bullshit. Yeah the walls break for no reason and you can go be with the party. I decided to stop DMing for these guys after that because they're actual retards. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, if there's one way to test if players are absolutely thick as shit or not. Give them a puzzle. Give, give them, them a, a really puzzle. simple puzzle. puzzle. Yeah. Like, it's like one of those ones where it's like the, you know, like the leveling stones. Like if you all stand on the stones, the fucking thing goes yes. down. And like, what do you do? <laughs> well, you know, I'll give you guys actually a good one. The last one we had was it was like uh it was like three gems and you had to put them into the wall uh-huh. in whatever order but i remember it's like look can you just like this out first because like you know the way you're describing it just just put it out in clean, <laughs> clean english first and, i'm quite good at puzzles and i know i'm horrible you're, at them. you are shit i'm glad full of them i'm a, I'm a genuine bling when it you comes are. to puzzles like genuinely yeah. thick as shit yeah like you, know? you throw a puzzle down in front of james and james is fucking mind just starts going uh, 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 pure autism just kicks in and it's like <laughs> panic ah! <laughs> you know I was doing a campaign where the players were bounty hunters with powers and shit in a futuristic setting and went overboard with an encounter they had two NPCs they were protecting and an NPC mercenary that they met earlier and was helping them after downing two of the five players I just had the mercs steal one of the enemy ships they came aboard two combat ships and bail, so the worst threats were out chasing it, and the remaining players handled the giant sandworms. It was one of my first time DMing and really thought they were going to be fine. Ended up fudging a few rolls so they wouldn't be obliterated. Like, everyone stumbles at the start. Yeah, like, I would fine. Ugh, don't plan, like, you know what I mean? I think, uh, you know what the biggest problem is? A lot of people have expectations about yeah. certain things it, like what people expect if they've never played D&D before what do they expect going into it what do people expect being a DM yeah. like going into it you know you, it really is what you yourself make of it yeah. you know what I mean and if you're not willing to put yourself right there and really 
you're gonna have a you, shit game. If you if, like, if you think, oh no, I couldn't do that. That's gonna make me look like a right dickhead. Eh, just go with it. What's the worst? You know what I mean? <laughs> make yourself look like a dickhead, and then see how they react. <laughs> like, the, wor- the worst thing that happens is possibly someone likes a story about you, and we end up talking <laughs> we end about up reading. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that's, that's genuinely the worst thing that's gonna happen. Yeah. And like, you know, we're not that bad, are we? You so, know I, mean? I wonder if that's ever happened. We read a story and somebody's listening. Go, oh my god, that's, that's me. me. <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> Let us know. Oh, I'm it's, sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Like, you guys are cool. You know that. Plot? I make shit up as the game goes along because I do absolutely zero planning and wing literally everything. It's made me really good with improv. The only thing I ever fudge is enemy health. I always lowball it for whatever reason, never remembering that the PCs do a ton of damage. I even did it on the last encounter, which was the first in our Genesis game. Though that was because it was our literal first combat in Genesis ever, three sessions in. What? How did you get three oh, sessions? Three sessions in without like, combat? Um, I well I don't know I don't know Genesis, so Yeah, I'm not very familiar I don't know with how the, system, the actual so. system goes, so Yeah, maybe, maybe. Let us know down below. My friends were all new and I was a new DM. So there were a few times the sea of DCs were totally that low, I swear. I just don't have the errata. Only one mate noticed because he also DMs, and the grip had fun. Balancing for an 8 PC group was a bitch as a noob. Fuck. First game and you're uh, fucking 8, eight players. players. Yeah. I, I'm not a big fan of games with 8 players anyway. I, fi- I feel like it takes too long yeah. to get through combat and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm not into big games. So I sometimes had to just weaken enemies I assumed the party would be fine with. Do not kill new players, beloved PCs they had been playing for months. I doubt it would actually have been a problem if I let them die because my players love feeling on edge or in danger in game. But oh well, they all had fun in the end. Oh, well, there you go. That's yeah. all that matters. He took on a lot for an eight-player grip for his mm, first time DMing. Not bad. Well, the only thing is, they're all mates. Yeah. So he's And if everybody still people. had fun, so... Yeah. And yeah. He, but as he said, this is all his mates. Mm. He's more than likely very comfortable mm. with them. It's not that big yeah. an issue. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and there was another DM in the grip. Yeah. So at least he can get some advice. So Yeah. That's, I think it's not bad. As far as it goes... Good on you, good on you. Yes. I had a player try to take out a Balrog, Balor stat block. Party fights the giant monster, it goes poorly. Party running from the giant monster. Everyone takes cover in a cavern too small for the Balrog to enter. Everyone sizes up their options, no one likes him. Paladin says he has a plan, and asks everyone to give him their shaped charges. A couple of sessions back, the artificer made a pretty good roll. I managed to mash enough volatile things together into a specifically designed capsule. They give him their explosives. He tells them it's been an honour. He activates the explosives and runs out of the cavern. Balor's stat block has resistance to fire and immunity to non-magical bludgeoning and piercing. And even if he rolled max damage, he wouldn't have been able to kill it, despite the damage they did to it earlier. I didn't ask him to roll anything. I just asked him to narrate how his character dies and take the Balrog with him. I regret nothing. That's very good. That's very That's good. That's how you do it, guys. That's how you do it. You know, sometimes, you know, give them a fighting chance. Yeah. And like, you know, if he was willing to sacrifice his character, I think he should be allowed it. Yeah. I, I would give it to him. I would I, give it I, to I, him. I, I wouldn't even begrudge him. No. You know what I mean? I think that was, uh, you know, I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. But I want you guys to tell us what you think about, like, you know, rules in general. For me, I do treat them more like guidelines. Yeah. I'm very loose with the goals a lot of the time. Mostly because I'm not actually very good with American goals. <laughs> <laughs> if I be completely honest with you guys, I'm actually going like shit at that. Um, yeah, I, it's just not my thing, okay? <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, what do you, what do you, how do you guys handle that? I love that you're just so blasé with that. It's well, like mostly because I'm not very good at remembering them. <laughs> well, that's true. You know what I mean? What's the point of lying totally. about it? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, of course I know all the goals, guys. <laughs> am I like? Am I like? Um, anyway, look, you tell us your versions of this. Have you? What do you let your players go away with if you're a DM? Or what does your DM let you away with? You know what I mean? Let us know down below. And as I said, we might make a video on it. Yeah. Um, you know, you guys know how it is. If you could, check out the advert. It does help us out a lot. We've got plenty of lovely new models in stock. Anything else, Megan? Oh, yeah, Megan's got the big cuff. But you guys oh, we know, know that. that. You guys know that. I'm in the big cuff, though, so that's kind of cool. But I hope you guys enjoy, and we'll see you next time. Bye.